This is Jubilee Christian Church Thicker Road. of me being crucified with Christ was to eradicate that old person that was incompatible with God. That man was killed on the cross. The reality of the fact in Christianity is we are born of the Spirit, but we are discipled by the Word. Welcome, Welcome to Jubilee Christian Church, Thika Road. Understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of God that is in you. We preach Christ. We adore your name, O God. Oh, Sekete le Bagidema. Oh, we glorify your holy name. Yahweh be magnified. We glorify your holy name. Yahweh. We glorify. You've given us life. Oh, thank you for your grace. We glorify. Jesus, we glorify your name is a tower of refuge. Your tower, your tower, you are the tower. We glorify, we glorify. Let us set a level, Father, we glorify, we glorify, we glorify. I glorify, I glorify. Asutele bakite, yasetala bose. Put your hands together, celebrate him, 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 celebrate him. How we celebrate you, Jesus. We celebrate you, Jesus. We celebrate your grace. We celebrate your power. We celebrate your might. We celebrate your grace. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate. Put your hands together. Celebrate him again. Amen. Amen. What effect did Calvary give you? What effect did Calvary make? Hallelujah. Just turn to somebody and tell them, I am free. Because of Calvary, I am free to dance. You do not seem convinced. Uh -uh. Turn to somebody, turn to somebody. Let there be joy in the house. Let there be joy. Spread the love, spread the love. Tell them, I rejoice for Calvary. I am free to dance. Amen, amen, amen. Are you free to worship him? Yeah. The church on this side. Are we together? You died and rose again. for me. You said it is done.
the work of Calvary. Ashuka to Zekatala Bagide, Ratuze, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Ashuka to Zekatala Bagide, Rante, Lebo Shikatala Bagida, Ratu Zekatala Bokuze, Ya Zekatala Bagide, Ratala Bo Shakatala Bagide, Ratala Bagide, Masi and Telebagida, Ratala Bo Shakatala Bagida. We worship Secret Jesus, you are what? What is your name, Jesus? What are you, O oh God? Jesus, oh Jesus. Your name, your 
stopped working miracles. You have not stopped healing her. You have not stopped restoring. You have not stopped loving us. Oh, and you are not about to stop her. Oh, nothing can separate us from your love. Oh, nothing can separate us from you. Nothing can separate us from your love. Oh, you do awesome work. You do awesome work. You do awesome work. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Today I am beginning a new series. Somebody say dominion. Sharon says spiritual dominion. Yeah, I want to talk about dominion. Dominion is very important. If you've been noting, we have been on uh, uh, the revelation and the teaching of the word of God has been progressive. There is somewhere that God is taking us and there are certain things that he wants us uh, to understand. And the reason is because there are things that he wants us to do. And he wants you to experience them from a place of knowledge. He doesn't want you to experience the things of God. And you're out there wondering what's happening. You are shocked. You are perplexed. No. He wants you to uh, 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 you know, know what is happening. When you, you start to manifest the grace of God. As I was talking. That there are people that have become channels of God's grace. But they don't know it. They don't know that God is using them to do certain things. They don't know. They, they, they are not aware that they, hand, that they have become vessels of, of, of God's grace and God's mercy. And therefore, even their cooperation and their you know, flowing with God is limited because they are not aware. Praise the name of Jesus. But when you are aware, you are able to cooperate more. You are able to align yourself and you are able to you know, uh, uh, work together with God effectively because you are yielded to what you understand. You are yielded to what you understand. Praise the name of Jesus. So we begin, we began by talking about spirit, soul, and body. And uh, the last uh, message I talked about it is talking about the power of the, of the spirit, the recreated spirit. That, that recreated spirit, that is you and me, if you are born again in Christ, there are certain things that you have within you. And they are spiritual substance. Amen. They are tangible in the spirit. They are as tangible in the spirit as stone or metal or iron is tangible in the physical. The fact that we can't see them doesn't mean that they are not powerful or they are not weighty or they are not uh, 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 of great importance. And therefore, it's important for you to know what you carry within you. The Bible says he has put eternity in their hearts. That within you as a believer, you as a new creation, he has put eternity within your hearts. He says that when somebody comes to you and he says that the, the, the kingdom of God is here or the kingdom of God is there, he says don't believe them. Because the kingdom of God is where? Where is the kingdom of God? You are a carrier of the kingdom of God. You have become vessels of mercy. You have become God's channel of grace. You have become examples of his kindness and his goodness. But the question is that when God starts to manifest that kindness and that goodness and that mercy and that grace, are you aware of it? Are you aware? All right, because every one of us, we are members of the body of Christ. All right, there is something that is being supplied to you, and there is something that you supply. Praise the name of Jesus. So many people's frustration is because they do not know how God is working in them and, 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 and working through them. So they become frustrated because they are not aware, and it's because they've not been taught. Praise the name of Jesus. And that is why we've been going towards that. Then we came to the workings of the grace of God. We talked about the grace of God. And, and, and what the grace of God has, has, has made you. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Praise God. And then we talked about what the grace of God has given you. That which God has given you access to. 
by the grace amen for by faith we have uh, 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 access into this grace where we, we where in we stand so if you have access what do you have access to what is it that the grace of god has given you what do you have because you have been born again by grace through faith and therefore we say that you have life amen just before i started talking we say that you have life you have the image of christ you have the 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 the, the inheritance you have uh, what else you have you have the spirit of god Hallelujah. You have not received the spirit that is of this world, but the spirit that is from God. Hallelujah. One day I was praying somewhere and I was telling God, give me, give me, give me. You know, he interrupted my prayer. It's good for God to interrupt prayer. Sometimes because some people don't even give him time to talk. So he has to interject. May he interject your monologue. For many people, prayer is just monologue. Amen. Can you imagine somebody coming to your office and 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 ajishika up and talking and talking and talking and talking? You go to say something and come Let me finish and talk and talk and talk and then say Amen and then walk out. You, they don't give you time to respond, and yet most of our prayers are like that. So interjected, and I took a paper when I'm reading or I'm praying. I always have a Bible, Bible, and and something to write on. So I took something to write on and I wrote 21 things and I did not exhaust them. 21 things that he has given me. They are here right now. Right now you are seated there. They are there. They are there. Where are the riches of Christ? Where is the blessing of Abraham? Should we continue? 21 things. If we continue that's the only thing I'm preaching. Amen. 21 and, and the, they were not exhausted. They were not, I didn't come to an end. I started to, you know, weep and I say, Lord, I see it. I get the message. I get it. I get it. I have them. Praise the name of Jesus. And my desire is that you get it. Somebody say, I get it. I am the image of Christ. Shout it out and say, I get it. I have life. I have favor. I have grace. I have power. I have authority. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Word of God. I have the name of Jesus. I have the inheritance. What, do you, what don't you have? Eh? Praise the name of Jesus. So today we start talking about spiritual dominion. Somebody say dominion. Yeah, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 to verse 31 don't worry wherever i'll stop i'll stop and carry out from there i'm not under pressure to finish amen what i am i want you to do is to understand amen so genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 31 the bible says then god said let us make a man in our image so the word our there is in capital according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth praise the name of jesus meaning when god created the earth he formed the earth there was nothing that was ever supposed to be above man there was nothing supposed to be above man man was supposed to be the ruler man was supposed to be the highest being that was created here on the earth. Are you getting that? So he was supposed to have dominion all over the earth. Praise the name of Jesus. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and was there any confusion? Yeah, he created what? Male. Somebody say male and female. Yeah, if he wanted the male, he created male. If he wanted female, he created female. There was no mix-up. The mix-up is something that's coming up right now, which is not really a mix-up. It's a problem. It's a demonic thing. Praise God. Male and female, he created he them. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, uh, verse 28, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it that word to subdue is very important it means to control put it under control 
Amen. Keep it under control. The earth was never supposed to go haywire. All right. The earth was now never supposed to go haywire. It was never supposed to go helter skelter. It was never supposed to spin out of control. He was supposed to subdue it. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, he says subdue it and have what? And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So the first scripture we read is God talking within himself. Elohim, the plurality of God. And this is the first hint we have of the Trinity. Amen. That doesn't mean there are three gods. Is one God manifesting himself in three persons. All right. So he says, let us make man in our own image. Meaning you are not made in the image of God the Father or God the Son or God the Holy Spirit alone. You are made in the image of the Trinity. That means you can be able to manifest at that level. Because the desire of God for man is how he designed him. How he created him. That is what spells out and defines your potential. Your potential for manifestation. Your potential for fruitfulness. Your potential for what you can, be, you can experience is determined by what you are created for. You are created for dominion. Somebody shout and say, I'm made for dominion. So you are made for dominion. Man was never created, male and female, was never created to be a slave. Within the creation of God, God never intended for anybody to be under bondage or to be a slave. And that's very, very important. God's idea when he said, let us. All right. And then in this verse 28, the Bible says he created them, male and female. And then he gave them the dominion that he said, let us. He said, let us make man, let them have dominion. So in verse 28, he gives them that dominion. He tells them, he gives them the command and he tells them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and do what? And have dominion, all right? Yeah, over everything that moves upon the earth. So he gives them a dominion, amen? And after he gives them dominion is when he forms man, yeah, in the flesh and breathes into man, and the man becomes a living soul. So by the time that man is being put in Eden, he has already been given the dominion. Hallelujah. So he is created. His spirit is a dominating spirit. All right. Within his spirit is a capacity to rule. The capacity to subdue. The capacity to multiply. The desire and the capacity to grow. That capacity to take charge of things. Hallelujah. So that's very, very important. So he, he did not have to look after for it. He was given it in within his spirit. Hallelujah. Within his spirit, he was. Are you still with me? Amen. Amen. Focus, please. You know, you can tell. You can tell when you're preaching. You're so much in the spirit. The way I can tell that is something that looks like pink. I don't know whether it's pink. You know, I can tell in the spirit. When you start to get there, you can tell destruction. So focus. Praise God. Yeah, focus. And that is why you repeat. Amen. So focus so that I'm able to finish this. So he, within that spirit, was dominion. Was blessing. Was the capacity to subdue, to multiply, to take charge. Hallelujah. And that is how God created you and me. So God's desire has always been to have the earth as a reflection or as an extension of heaven. God did not want the earth to look void while the heaven is supposed to be is a wonderful place. No, no, no. God wanted everything in heaven to also happen on the earth but physically because heaven is a spiritual reality. But the earth becomes the physical manifestation of that which is in heaven. Where it becomes visible, where it is physically enjoyed by those who live on the earth physically. Praise the name of Jesus. 
where that dominion is experienced and implemented as it is in heaven. In heaven, let me tell you, I didn't want to talk about heaven. Maybe I should sometime just turn it a bit, a bit low. Thank you so much. Imagine I'm saying reduce Kidogo. Amen. Reduce a bit. Hallelujah. This microphone is powerful. It's big but micro but powerful. Amen. So realize that in heaven. I pay attention. I'm saying things that are not in the notes. These are free of charge. In heaven, there is no disorder. There is nothing in heaven that is contrary to God's will. The first person who tried to bring that disorder and rebellion was kicked out. So in heaven, everything is subject to the will of God. Yeah, the will of God reigns and rules to power excellence. All right? In heaven, everything is the way God wants it. Praise God. So he says, I want the earth to be like that. That the thing that is happening on the earth is the will of God. That the thing that is happening in your life is nothing but the will of God. And that is why when we pray, we refuse contradictions. We refuse inconsistencies. We refuse anything that is contrary to the will of God. Because it is going against the thoughts of God for you. God did not want your life to be a mixture of his will and a mixture of accidents and chances and, 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 and things that, you know, are not ordered by him. He wanted your will to be a manifestation of his will. That when somebody looks at you physically and looks at what is happening in their life, they can tell what the will of God for people is. They can tell this is what God desires for people because you are God's agenda. Somebody say, I am God's agenda. Are you following me? So God created uh, Adam and Eve to implement that kingdom. To implement in the beginning, Adam and Eve, as I said, they were sons of God. God did not want the earth to be ruled and to be inhabited by slaves. Amen. And that is what happened after the fall. Everybody on the earth became a slave. Became a slave to sin. Became a slave to, uh, or, or became, or come, came under bondage to the fear of death. Came under bondage to fear. They were ruled by the powers of darkness. Everybody was a slave. And that was totally different from God. How God intended. God's initial intention was that everybody on the earth was that would be born from Adam and Eve, that they will be sons of God. That number one, they would also have dominion as Adam and Eve were given dominion. So God's mind was never to have a slave. That anybody on this earth would be sons of God and kings. And that is what Jesus has made us. He has brought many sons into glory. How many sons of God do we have here? Amen. And he has made us kings and priests and to our God. So the initial plan of God to have kings and priests and sons here on the earth has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Through his death and resurrection, he delivered you from the powers of darkness. He delivered you from the slavery of sin. He broke every bondage. Amen. He broke every everything. He became the curse so that you might not be a king with a curse or a son with a curse or somebody who has inheritance but has a curse. So he concluded the matter on the cross. Amen. I'm feeling like a preaching is coming, but I wanted to teach a bit. He broke it all. He said, Tetelesta, it is completely completed. Hallelujah, it is completely completed. Why? So that the person who is transferred and conveyed into the kingdom of his dear son, according to Colossians 1.13, that person that is transferred into the kingdom of, of the son of his love is able to carry this dominion without encumbrances, without hindrances, without contradictions. So God is not having kings that are a mixture. God is not having kings that are that are, 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 are a contradiction. No, he's having, and let me tell you something, people can talk about the church, but we are getting to the climax. Let me tell you, let me tell you about weddings. You know, you've been in a wedding 
Yeah, if you get in the morning, you know, and look at the bride, you would think there's confusion because the matuta is still in place. You know, they're still wearing what do you call these free dresses? Is this easy as in anger design? What do you call them? There's something you, eh? Diras, anatembe even na diras, you know, anatembe the nails are all over the place. She doesn't look like in a few hours she's gonna be walking down the aisle, and that is might be how the church might be looking right now. But let me tell you, when she gets into that room, give her thirty minutes. Okay, I don't know whether it can happen in thirty minutes in reality, but uh, can it work? Uh, ca- can the lashes be in place in thirty minutes, and the nails be in place, and the hair be in place, and the makeup be in place in thirty minutes? By the time Jesus is coming, the wrinkles are off, the spots are off, the blemishes are off. Praise the name of Jesus. When you find her three days before the wedding, she is all over town. She's in Sili, she's in downtown Third World, trying to look for this and the other. And that is what the church could be looking right, like right now. We are trying to get things together. We are trying to discover this and discover that. But let me tell you, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it is coming together. In, in a very short time, the bride will step out and will operate like the bride is supposed to operate. The, the church of God is going to, by the time the trumpet blows, everything that God intended to happen here on the earth, the dominion he intended you to have is going to be experienced. The wealth of the wicked will be in the hands of the righteous. People will be casting doubt devils in the malls. You will be healing the sick in the lift. You know, oh my God. The glory that he intended to be manifested on the earth is coming upon the church. It's going to be manifested. Praise the name of Jesus. Why? Because God cannot send his word. And then the word, after all those thousands of years, he said, I wanted glory. It didn't happen. Oh, I wanted dominion. No, no, no. God is going to make it happen. A generation that knows the gospel, a generation that knows who they are in Christ, a generation that understands dominion a generation that knows the grace of god a generation that knows that christ lives in them and greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world they will not be scared by witch doctors they will not be intimidated by sorcerers they will not be scared by illuminati they will not be scared by idols but they will function like people that have an inheritance they will function like the body of Christ they will have function like the church of the living God the Bible says that the church of God cannot be shaken it will not be shaken the glory of the latter house is coming upon the church and the church is coming to manifest it somebody shout and say yes Amen, amen. Don't give up on the church yet. We might disagree upon this and disagree about that. But an agreement is coming. The unity of the spirit is coming. God is going to call attention to himself. He's going to say, you guys, you are wrong. This is what is right. Miracles will be breaking all over the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will be meeting on church to church. I mean in church on a Sunday. And you will be sharing what happened. Wewe ulifufua wangapi? Hey, hallelujah. How many did you wake up from their sleep? How many cripples walked? And you don't even have a title. You don't even need a title. How many people were filled in the Holy Ghost in the salon? You know, I got uh, somebody, I think it's John Mozemba. He sent me a clip of what is happening in Latin America. Those people, my God, they are experiencing. I feel like I can go there. Just there, there and just experience it. They are experiencing a move of God that has never been seen in, in, in creation. I was I was shown a clip of a barber who is cutting who, who is clipping the hair of of, um, of of a client and he's clipping the hair and he starts to sing he's shaving as he's singing worship and all of a sudden all the people that were waiting for their turn they are waiting for their nails to be made and their hair to be cut and their makeup to be applied all of them started to weep and some of them started to speak in other tongues it's gonna happen friends 
is going to happen in restaurants. It's going to happen in the matatu. You enter the matatu and they start to weep and they follow you to church because the bride will be the bride. The body will be the body. The glory of the body of Christ is coming upon the body. Somebody shout and say yes. And I tell you, even me, I don't understand the whole of it. I just feel I want to preach certain things. I wake up and I feel I want to. My wife will tell you, sometimes I'm there the whole week just walking around and wondering, God, what do I tell them? What do I say? And on Saturday night, he wakes me up. And in 30 minutes, I hear a voice preaching within me. And in 30 minutes, uh, I, I write it down the entire. I write down notes that I will preach for a month. Uh, why? because he doesn't want you to refer to anything familiar he says I'm doing something the things that hey God can, can, let, let, let me preach please let me preach let me preach let the man preach yeah the things that Paul said I was caught up in the third heaven and I saw things that it was forbidden for people to speak and God is saying I'm feeling prophetic this Sunday God is saying a time for the things that have been forbidden to be spoken up. and the things that have been forbidden to be experienced uh, it has come a time that the church will heal the sick with their shadow I'm talking about a shadow I am talking about a shadow somebody shout and say it's me if you are the church lift up your hand you will be you know God has a system when he says he will transfer wealth it doesn't mean we will invade their houses and rob them no he will give you the ideas that the world will come towards you he will give you one concept and there will be a transfer of the wealth in that concept somebody shout and say amen he will give you a business and people will be looking for that business how did you get this idea who taught you business who taught you to do this that you understand that you are a vessel of the fulfillment of prophecy you are a vessel God is using you if you know you are a vessel lift it up yeah 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 the way one man joseph saved us entire civilization the way one man daniel he says i know god give me some time i'll tell you about your dream tomorrow and he prays and he comes back not only with a dream but with an interpretation you go to the boardroom and he say give me until tuesday i want to take one day and fast and i want to take one day and pray the next day you bring them a strategy that brings up the company you stand like jacob telling Laban, Laban, you remember the day I came here? You only have a small flock. You only had a few sheep. But look at what I have done by the grace that I carry. And that is why it is important. And I am emphasizing again, it is important for you to know what you carry because your expectation of manifestation is determined by your understanding of what do I have. Such as I have, give I am to you you cannot give us what you don't have and today i emphasize discover who you are in christ discover what he has given you know that he has given you power know that he has given you authority know that you have the grace of god know that you have the wisdom of god know that you are favored for life you don't have to go looking for favor just manifest who you are somebody shout and say i have it Lift it up and say, I have it. Please sit down, let me. Oh my God, he said, I, I have given you dominion. Go out there and subdue. Bring it under control. Let it take the shape of your vision. When you go to your business, you make things look like the way you dreamt them. You make things look like the way you saw it in the vision. The way God has showed it to you. The way God showed your business doing is the way it will work. It's the way you will do it. The way God God revealed it to you the way God has showed us about the church is the way it will be praise the name of Jesus the way that shall I mean the, 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 the church we are building Malachi it will be the same way 
Why? He first gave me the vision of a tent. Yeah, 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 yeah. He showed me the vision of a tent. We looked for land. We went to hotels. We wanted to get a small hall where we can begin to have, I mean, 50, 100. But he insisted. Uh, he insisted. Every time I prayed, that is what I saw. I drew it. I drew it. And we are already drawing that which we are seeing. Praise the name of Jesus. And today, it is exactly as I saw it. It is exactly, it is exactly. If I go to my files, if I go, you know, Malachi was there. Uh, Mal Malachi, remember the way we drew the mapping of this place. So where the toilets would be, it is the way we drew it. And God began by giving us a vision of a tent. Now he is giving us uh, a vision of a sanctuary with real balconies, uh, with escalators, with lifts, uh, oh, with a sire candle. Uh, that is how it will be. He said, God is at work in you. He is doing, working. God is working in you according to his will. It is according to his pleasure. He says, what will come out of your life is according to the will of God. It's according to the pleasure of God. It's according to what God. He said, I know the thoughts that I am, I have for you. He said, yield yourself. Surrender yourself. Live in harmony with me. Submit yourself to my word and I will bring my thoughts uh, into manifestation in your life the way i've been thinking them that is how they will manifest and god is thinking something about the church in these last days hallelujah turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor the will of God is happening in me. God's purpose is happening in me. We reject any contradiction. That is why you can't accept everything. You can't take every prophecy. You can't say yes to whatever anybody calls you. No, 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 no. Some things you don't even have to pray for a prophet to tell you whether it is God or, God or not. You know who you are in Christ. You know your identity and immediately you can say that's me. That that that's not me. That can't be me. And that is what Hannah did. He says, why are you praying like a drunken woman? He said, me? Drunken? No. This is the feeling of my heart. My heart has a burden. And when a heart has a burden, there is a way a person reacts. So don't confuse me with a drunken woman. I am not a drunken woman. You know who you are. When the people call you a failure, you say, failure? Who? Me? I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Oh, am I preaching to you, balcony? Can you hear me, balcony? You don't accept any label. Don't accept any name. Don't accept any description that people give you. If they say you are the carrier of God's glory, then they are accurate. If they say you are the carrier of the inheritance, they are accurate. But if they talk about your background, controlling your future, they are out of place. They are inaccurate because now you have become a new creation. You are a vessel of honor. You are a vessel of grace. You are a vessel of mercy. Somebody shout and say dominion. My God, take that keyboard because I feel I feel a fire right here this morning. I feel a fire. I want to push it to you and tell you you are not what people say you are. You are what God says you are. Yeah, the thoughts of God and the thoughts of people are different. Even if you have made mistakes, even if you have goofed, God's desire for you remains the same. Nobody can edit your destiny until they go before the foundation of the earth where God separated you you were separated before you came into your mother's womb people might say it was an unwanted but in god there is nothing that is unwanted if you are here you are here because he wanted you here and he wanted you here for a divine power even if you've been raised without a father god is your father he wanted you somebody shout and say god wanted me Ah, uh, yeah, 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 shout it out and say, God wanted me. Even if you crash through the contraceptives and crash through every barrier and you manifested without them planning, they did not plan, but that is why you came because God saw you before your, your mother started to know that she's expectant and you are a carrier of destiny. Somebody shouted, oh My God, I know I'm speaking things, but in God, there is never any mistake. Hey! You are here because you are budgeted for in the work of the cross. You are budgeted. If you are unwanted in God, God has to rebudget for you. They say, hey, kuna get crusher, amekuja. 
we did not plan for them but tuongeze neema kidogo let's look at how to get you know when we have visitors and you have to organize where to go and get more milk and more bread and there are people whose mind is like that because people said where will it okay to no 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 in god there's nothing like that hey you are already budgeted for hallelujah somebody shout and say yes so walk confident don't accept the rejection of men to translate to divine rejection no 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 hakuna kitu kama hiyo he wanted me somebody say i am accepted shout it out and say i am fully accepted in the beloved i am fully accepted god has no he has no doubt about his acceptance of you you are fully accepted and uh, you know the inheritance that he has given you you have been given the inheritance of a full son with full privileges with full access with full benefits oh my god how do I, I i feel like i can stand here and preach it my god are you getting it somebody shout and say full privileges shout it out and say full access Shout it out and say full benefits. So God is not wondering what to do with you. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. He's, he's not wondering. Uyo ameomba sana. So tutamtolea wapi neema. What what do we do? What do we make him? He's praying too much. He already separated you. Somebody say I'm separated. If you discover your separation, your predestination, you start to operate in divine grace. They align with your gifts, your talents. My God, the day I discovered I'm a preacher, oh, I flow. Praise God. Yes, there is a learning curve. Because those days I would preach from the table of contents to the maps in 10 minutes. And then wonder what what else do preachers preach? Are you getting? But I didn't stay there. One as if he were. So God creates and makes this man and within them. You singers, if you miss a key, don't worry. Even us preachers miss a verse. But that does not disqualify the calling or the separation. The problem is when you stop learning. Keep learning. Tell your neighbor, keep learning. If you lose some money business people when you lose some money don't quit the business learn from that loss and continue praise the name of Jesus Christ he created man and within them he put dominion he put the capacity to subdue capacity to subdue Adam did not need to go anywhere else to be able to have dominion and to be able to subdue no within adam was the three levels of knowledge operating at the same time accurate knowledge which is epignosis understanding which is which church have you guys be attending so nurses understanding somebody say understanding and then wisdom which is phronesis can you imagine a person operating in accurate wisdom perfect understanding and divine wisdom all at the same time yet to us christ has been made wisdom ah. christ is our wisdom somebody say christ is my wisdom so when you say you have christ you have what you have wisdom somebody say i have christ i have wisdom I have power. He said to you, it has been given to know. It has been given grace manifested in privileged knowledge, privileged information where you are given information only the favor favored ones have access to. And you have been revealed certain things. You know certain things so that you can live and operate in them. Praise the name of Jesus. 
So God wanted to rule the earth through his sons. The earth was supposed to be a family business. Even the kingdom is. It is about the household of faith. It is about the family of God. It's about the father and his sons operating and taking dominion. So from the very beginning, God wanted this earth to be filled with the family of God. Sons of God. Taking church. Doing business. Subduing with the blessing of their father. Are you getting me? Or have I said something wrong when I said family? Are you in God's family? Hallelujah. So dominion is supposed to be within the household of faith. Within the family of God. Given to the sons of God who are also kings. Amen. So God intended that as he visited Adam and Eve, they would implement and execute the kingdom here on the earth. He would just come and have fellowship and communion with them. But things are the way God intended. They are having dominion. They are having, they are subduing. They are multiplying. Things are happening the way God wanted them to happen. And they had actually begun. Because when God brought all the animals to Adam to name, he named them. And God knew and said, what he calls them is what they are. Because he was accurate. Adam was not operating in ignorance of divine things. He wasn't. He wasn't. And that is the problem of the temptation. Yeah? Because it's not like Eve did not know this, this, this snake which speaks. This serpent which speaks. This one was not named by Adam. This, this one is not within what we've been interacting or we've been looking at. Are you getting me? Yeah. It's when her appetite and her desire were provoked. And he said, did God say? It's because he knew if you eat this fruit, you will be like God. Be like God. Look like God. Operate like God. And that is why he didn't go to Adam because he knew that we men were created with a desire to look good. Looks are very important to ladies. Out of Adali Akai Bila lunch. They would rather stay without food but look good. Okay, see kuwa ingilia. Am I okay? Am I right? They will take one hour on that mirror. Sometimes when my, my wife is dressing in the morning, I have to go and say, honey, I want my share of the mirror. And my share is five minutes. <laughs> my, it's not even five minutes. I just do like this. And I look like this. I do this to my teeth. Bye. It's on Dakika Tattoo. Of that big mirror, my share is three minutes. But she will stay there and turn around and look. And I'm like, so you let me look at you behind here and tell you how you look. But she has to verify herself. Have you ever told your wife you're okay? Yeah, yeah, man. Have you ever, you, you want to rush somewhere, your wife is still like, you know, in front of the mirror. And you're like, Twende, uko sawa. Sini mimi ni mekuambia uko sawa. I'm telling you, me now on a 3D. I can tell you uko sawa. But she's still like, that's my verify. Sazingine anangalia hivi mbaka nails. Mbaka na test sauti kwa kio. It's because within them, they are the glory of man. A woman is the glory of man. And she, she likes looking nice. And it's good, please look nice. Don't look nice. Don't look nice before you are married. After you are married, you don't bother. No, no, no. Don't make that man feel like, you know, he was shortchanged. No. Keep looking nice look nice amen okay 
But we should have a couples. Okay, so now this man is supposed to be the channel through which God is enforcing the kingdom. God is ruling through him. Praise the name of Jesus. But when he was, I mean, she was deceived and they disobeyed God by disobedience. By disobedience, they became slaves. That is in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. But at what time am I supposed to stop, honey? I'm supposed to stop up to what time? By disobedience, Romans 6.16. 6, okay. 6.16, he says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one's slaves. And that is why fasting is important. Fasting helps you to regulate your appetites, your urges, your yearnings. So you are in control of your emotion. You are in control of your desires. You are in control of your hunger. You are in control of your physical appetites. Because you are not supposed to obey every instinct. You are not supposed to obey every impulse. You are not supposed to do everything you feel like doing. Praise God. So it gives you the ability to dominate yourself, to control yourself. And you know even as a new creation, God cannot control you by force. God cannot do things in you and through you without your cooperation. That is why Paul speaking, he says... I pommel my body. I treat it harshly. Lest having preached to others, I myself be disqualified. He has the Holy Spirit, but it is his responsibility to control his body, to control himself, to dominate his own appetite and his own body so that he can be a partaker and experience the things he teaches about. Are you getting? So he says, I don't want my life to be two different lives. There are people who have two different lives. There is a church life and there is a life outside there. I hope your life is one. You are integral. I, a man of integrity or a woman of integrity is that they are one. What you see today is what you will see on Wednesday. Are you that kind of a person? If I came to where you have business, what I see on Sunday is what is it what we will see on Thursday? You know, people sometimes tell tell believers, and believers are bought into it. They are told, "Is he canisa? Is he later canisa apa?" No, 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 no. Faith is faith, even in your office. Hallelujah! Favor is favor, even in your office. You walk with God. Christ lives in you every day. Not only in church, but also in your office. Do you agree? So that's very, very important. So God's desire is that he may rule through you. Amen. That he may rule through you. The kingdom, dominion, was lost by Adam, but was not lost by God. That is why I will say something. I hope you still love me after this. Will you? That is why I don't understand. When people go to warfare and start to pray and saying they are telling the devil to give them what belongs to them. Devil, bring back my inheritance. Does he have it? The only thing he had is the control of the earth. God did not lose dominion. God did not lose authority. It is man by subjecting himself and making himself a slave. By obeying Satan. That is why it is important. Take charge. Make, be careful what you obey. And that is why the other day we silenced voices. Contrary voices. Where people have gone to divine us and other places, we silence that so that in your life is only one voice. 
And I told you, can I tell you something? Let me, let me tell you the truth. There are no two gods. And there are no two ways of worshipping God. And there are no two ways of pleasing God. So these are the things that come out of customs. These are not gods. That is what Paul teaches. These are not gods. And then when you go into custom, believe me, as a pastor, I have heard of crazy customs. Crazy custom. People have so crazy customs. There are customs out there if you are told to do, you would shiver. Yet, there are believers who do it because they are looking for a blessing. Which blessing? Are there two sources of blessing? Oh, please help me preach here. Are there two sources of blessing? No. Are you getting? But what happens is that a contradiction is in, introduced. So within the life of a believer, there, there, there are two voices. And I don't know mother bow who are to an ajaribu kunyamazisha. Nyamazisha mother bow, mother bow, mother bow. No, 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 no. He says, for freedom Christ has made you free. Do not submit again. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Do not submit. God has delivered you from appetites and temptations. Do not submit again. Do not do what? Submit again. Can you put that in the, in the TPT? In my view, some of the people that come and say they want deliverance are people that were made free but submitted again. If a believer gets saved and they continue the way they have gotten saved and be taught the word and pray, there would never be a need for deliverance. But if they continue going to every place, Oh, Muganga kutoka pemba, sijui daktari wa hii. You know, sijui daktari wa mapenzi. Wow. Let me be clear. The anointed one has set us free. Not partially. But completely and wonderfully free. Somebody say, I am wonderfully free. We must always cherish this truth. And stubbornly refuse. Stubbornly refuse to go back into the bondage of our past. Stubbornly refuse. You say this yeah, is in my past and I am not going there. Are you getting me? So that's very, very important. So within your spirit or within the spirit of man was everything that God wanted him to have. And I've already said it. You have dominion. You have wisdom. You have knowledge. You have life. Man had the nature of God. And God's nature is the nature of dominion. They take the Ark of the Covenant and they put it together on the same bench with a statue. A statue, a stone statue of Dagon. They put it in the same room and on the same platform with the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was just a typology. A representation. Are you getting me? But even that typology and representation was enough to topple the stone image of Dagon. They took him and put him back. The following day, they found that he has been broken. Nobody touching. Nobody moving. Nobody kicked. That I do, but just being next to the Ark of the Covenant. And that is why Paul is asking, if God be for us, who can be against us? You are supposed to be so aware of who you are and what you have in God. That if you move into a locality and there is a shrine of witchcraft there, they start to look who is interfering with their network. Even before you have gone around pouring oil. Just being there. With the presence of God. With the power of God. Me, I don't bother fighting witchcraft. It can't affect me. There is no sorcery against Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. 
Yet there are people, they are fasting of 21 days. 18 of those days. Eh? Ni kuaribu chavi. Oh, ni naribu. Unamuambia, tuombe chai, dada. Barikisha ichai. Baba, sante kwa ichai. Na tunaribu nguvu zote za giza. Nguvu zote za uchavi na uganga na ushirikina na zingaombo. Tunaribu dumba zote. Ambao zineza kuwa kwa maziwa na majani chai. Na sukari tunaribu. Kama kuna nguvu za giza zilikuwa kwa sufuria baba. Tuna paralyze zote. Chai inapoa. Situ wachilie tuendelea na chai we. Where they learn warfare? Are you getting me? Because their mind is like everything is under witchcraft. Ukingia kwa ofisi na wabi overi. Lazima kwanza wage war. Watu anakuja na machupa za mafuta. Because their mind is not on the presence they carry and its power. Their mind is in the witchcraft that is in places and the power of that witchcraft. Are you getting me? Paul goes to Ephesus. Ephesus was a, an altar city. It was a gate city. Are you getting me? Yeah. So I can teach you those things. I've taught them before. They are somewhere in before Christ. Amen. They were altars. Jericho and Ephesus. It was the custodian of the shrine of Diana. One man called Paul. He went into that city. Without backing. Eh? And there was a riot. The businesses started to shut down. <laughs> Excuse me. The businesses started to shut one person. The difference is not the power in them. The difference is the knowledge. The understanding. You know, Elijah was there. Watching the prophets of Baal and the high priests of Asherah doing their work. He was there just watching them. He says, see, 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 call him man. Could have been sleeping. Do you know the believers of this age what they would be doing? If they were Elijah. They would be sitting there telling other believers, Nifunikeni nadamu tafadhali. Funikeni nadamu. Funikeni nadamu ya Yesu. Hati uichawi nafanyika hapa ni modirikane. Nifunikeni, munikumbuke. Munifunike nadamu. This man was not bothered. He says they are not gods. <laughs> they are not gods. They are not there are not many gods. There are not many powerful names. There are not many that are seated above every principality and power. There is only one. And that one lives in you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one lives in you. How powerful is your God? How mighty is your God? How great is your God? Where is your God in comparison to idols? Huh? The Bible says they went out to cast out demons. And when they come back, they said they danced to your tune. We commanded them and they did what they, we commanded them. The devils are supposed to obey you. They are supposed to obey you. Are you hearing me? But you have to know that you have the dominion. You have the authority. Somebody shout and say, I have it. So man lost the dominion, but God did not lose the dominion. Because God did not lose the dominion, God came in the flesh. Because if they are, God had lost the dominion, where would he get it? So it is a person who had been given, who lost it, but God didn't lose it. So for God to get us back, and give us back the dominion, God came in the flesh put on flesh and dwelt among us and showed us what dominion is all about he silenced the storm you know there is that level of dominion you silence it I, when we were beginning this church we would suspend rain 
Sema we, we drive home from the house when rain is starting. And we tell rain, you will rain in the afternoon. I remember, I remember Terry when we would have overflow for, for, for the anniversary and it's about to rain October to November, short rains. And you would tell rain, you are not raining. On the, and you remember that? Because it was chaotic. It was, if it rained, it would be chaotic in Aribu Sherehe. But, we would tell rain when to rain. I remember this, we were tightening the tent. We were tightening the tent and that corner was lifted. It was the wind there. You know, I was, I was behind here with my wife in the car. And within minutes, dark clouds started to gather. And big drops, you remember honey? Big drops. Nikona moja megonga windscreen. Boo! Then boo! Then dust boo! And I am like, what? And the tent, half of it is not tied. We are tightening it. I think it was the second week after we started. Within minutes, the, 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 the sky was dark. There was a billboard on that side that was torn and carried away. There were billboards that were torn. I jumped out of the car and I stood there. We didn't have a balcony. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have an, uh, an overflow. I stood there and I said, in the name of Jesus, you are not messing up my tent. I command you to scatter now. And I'm telling you, I filmed it. Something, unajoy le boldness in Anziaga kwa kwa vidole. Sijui kama usha iskiye, inatoka kwa vidole ina... Yeah. I'm telling you within minutes, the sun was shining. Somebody shout and say dominion. I went to Kambani, a place called Ngamba. We were having a meeting in Ngamba. There had not been rain for years. There was famine. Those repeated famines. And I was preaching in that crusade as an evangelist. And I said before this crusade is over, there is going to be rain na nimvua ya mavuno. By the time we said grace, it didn't wait for Sunday. By the time it, we said grace that day, there was rain. There was rain. The following, listen. The following day, I don't give these things because you know sometimes people think, oh, Pastor Maurice, you know, as I am, you know, let me, let me. So, the following day, Pastor Sam, the crusade was packed and the church was full. They were calling me last month to celebrate 25 years of that church. He said, You are the one who planted this church. Come. Are you getting me? I'm telling you on Sunday, we didn't go to church. The rivers were overflowing. And there are those rivers, they don't have bridges. They have corrugation, what do you call it? A concrete slab. So you pass. The water was up to where the window of the car is. So we didn't go to church. We didn't. We couldn't cross the rivers. Yet it hadn't rained. The problem you entertain circumstances is because you know you are born again. You know Christ lives in you. You know you are an heir. But you don't know what that can do. You don't know what that can do. That can stop rain. You know there is this man of God called Marion Branham. He was having a meeting in South Africa. A tent meeting. And there was a cyclone coming to tear up the meeting. Instead, people started to run away. He said, don't fear, don't run away. He stepped out of the tent and he stood in the way of that cyclone. And he stood like this. When the cyclone came like this and hit his leg, it dissipated and disappeared. Hallelujah. Why? Because dominion is given to us so that we can enforce our positions whenever our positions are challenged. Otherwise, people would be moving us anyway. They move us. They take our staff. Anasema hapa wingi. No, anasema mi naingia. Hapa anasema wingi. Ambia, ni naingia, lakini ni kingia utakuwa hapo. That is what dominion does. Are you hearing me? And that is what Elisha did. He said, there will be wheat. And there will be barley. By this time tomorrow. And this guy says, surely, anyewe, ah, ni wa ubiri. Even if God opens the windows of heaven, where will that wheat and barley come? And he says, it will be there. You will see it, but you will not eat of it. 
Are you hearing me? And that is what happened. When your position, when your right, when your privilege is challenged, how do you respond to it? Do, are you helpless? Do you cow? Do you fold yourself and say, Hi, Zuru? No, 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 no. You have power within you to enforce your position in Christ. When sickness attempts to come, you say, sickness, no. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are not coming into this temple. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Dominion. Somebody shout and say, dominion. Dominion is given to us so that we can be able to enforce the will of God as it has been revealed. The will of God as it has been accomplished in Christ. He says that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many sick people are there in heaven? We used to sing an old song, Hallelujah Square. I see all my friends in the hallelujah, hallelujah square. And I don't see a blind man in the hallelujah square. I don't see a cripple in the hallelujah square. This guy meets a guy and says, friend, you can't see. And then he starts to sing and say, I see no blind man in the hallelujah square. There are no cancers in the hallelujah square where we gather and worship the lamb for years and days without and there is none with asthma there is none with high blood pressure there is none with skin disease there is no one with fibroids there is no one with arthritis and he says as it is in heaven so let it be here on the earth praise the name of jesus nobody will be raptured sick nobody will be raptured with their walking Nobody will be raptured with their wheelchair. Nobody will be raptured with their stretcher. When that trumpet goes, everything here is reorganized. And in the twinkling of an eye, asthma bows. Your cancer bows. And the bones will receive strength. The dead will be raised. Why? Because in the kingdom of God, no disorder is entertained. No contradiction is entertained. There is no area with a shadow no area in fact this is there's no light there there is no sun there the face of christ himself is the illumination the bible says his face is like seven suns it shines brighter than seven suns and there will not be area of any shadow he dwells in an approachable light and in him there is no shadow at all there is no shadow there is no darkness at all and that is how it's gonna be but let me tell you he has given you power to enforce it here he say if you see it in heaven and one I, I didn't come but two minutes just give me two minutes I, I, I define to you what uh, dominion is all about can I define to you dominion somebody shout and say dominion the dominion the word dominion means to reign it means to reign it means to rule that when you are given dominion by God he gave you the authority to reign and to rule and to govern and to administrate uh, administrate every son of God is an administrator of the kingdom of God every son of God is a diffuser of the glory and the knowledge of the son of God you are the one that dispenses and administers the glory of the fragrance of Christ you carry the fragrance of Christ and you spread it wherever you go somebody shout and say amen to reign is to enforce standards hey standards somebody says standards you know what a ruler is you wanted a line that is straight you wanted to separate this integers and you wanted to separate fractions amen you wanted to to separate living things and non-living things you draw a ruler it creates separation and god is saying i am giving you the power to enforce standards you enforce standards standards on the earth you are the salt of the earth you are the light of the world you enforce the things of the kingdom here that where you are there is no crime where you are there is no witchcraft where you know by the time Paul died there was no witchcraft in Ephesus oh God there was no ever witchcraft in Ephesus 
Yeah, it was a total Christian nation in Rome. It became the center of Christianity. All those idols became useless. Why? Because people with the revelation of God. I told you about Mexico or no, Guatemala. A place called Almolonga in Guatemala. You go search it. They started to close police stations. They started to convert police stations to canteens and to restaurants. Why? Because a revival had broken. The Welsh revival in the UK when there was that revival they had to train the horses another language because the horses were used to insults they responded to insult when they were told turn right they were told turn right with an insult but now the driver of the horse and the owner of the horse has gotten uh, saved and has been filled with the Holy Ghost there are no obscenities in their mouth there are no filthy language in their mouth there is no you know insults in their mouth so the horses would refuse to turn back home to Kane. so they had to go back to be retrained yes it is there noted in history the power was so much that in 1930s there was no olympic there was no olympic in the calendar of the olympic it is written revival there was so much revival nobody was going to watch people running nobody was going to watch football nobody was going to throw the javelin why because the power of god has shaken the earth and the hearts of men had been turned towards our god oh give us one more oh god one more that will be rich to the depths of the people's heart that will change the very core and the very foundation of society give us another revival my god shake the earth one more time draw our hearts to you one more time revive us again to prayer one more time oh revive thy works oh god as in habakkuk revive thy works so that those who have never seen the power of god will behold the power and the splendor of our king somebody shout and say amen dominion he said you create order he says i have given you the ability go and create order they are the bible says in isaiah the earth was not created in chaos it is the fall that has brought in chaos that has brought suffering but the power of god brings it back into order when a believer oh knows what the power of god is all about and the word of god the family will be in order the marriage will be in order the children will be in order the bible says any deacon or any bishop uh, who wants to take the place of a bishop he must know how to order his family his family might be in order and you go beyond the family and order the church uh, order the church in order put it in order and that is why i say if i see something nasty on facebook if i have your number i promise you what is that oh your kid to Doa is not order, is out of order. You are born of God and you're behaving as if you don't know God. Let's be consistent. Let our behavior be as God. Praise the name of Jesus. We are the one who are reflecting God. We reflect God in church and we reflect God even on Facebook and on Twitter and on TikTok and on Instagram. You do not entertain. You are not a, 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 a dispenser of confusion. No, you are not the reason why people are confused about Christianity. You are the reason why people know what Christianity is. You are the reason why people know who God is. You are the reason why people desire God. So if people see your Facebook page, do they desire the world or do they desire the things of the Spirit? This is not the time you walk out because I will think you're protesting. Are you hearing me? Somebody shout and say order. So you say Adam and Eve put it in order. Garnish it with the order of God. And let me tell you something. When you truly become spiritual and get into the word, one of the things that will start to happen is that your life will fall into order. Because God does not bless disorder. He is not the author of confusion. He will not bless confusion. 
He said, fall into order. And when people fall into order, that's where power is manifested. He says, you go rule. Go put it the way I wanted it to put. And that is why we are told when we pray, we look at what has happened in heaven. We see the order that is there in heaven. Praise the name of Jesus. That is why in church, we have a program. That is why we know by the time Friday is here or Saturday, we know who is singing. Because even in heaven, we know which cherubim starts to say holy it's not the 24 elders that begin the sanctuary was in order and me as a pastor i'm here to enforce order 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 if i call somebody i've told people if i call you and i correct you then i'm and you refuse then i'm not your pastor how can you give me a responsibility and then you are not willing to follow that responsibility I cast out devils, I pray for you when you're sick, I dedicate your children, but when you make a mistake, I can't even tell you, you are out of order. Why do you want my blessing and you don't want my correction? Why do you want my blessing? I pray and I'm telling God, Bariki disorder, Bariki confusion, he won't. So God will tell the pastor, I'm here with you. And that is why Paul was told, was telling Timothy, I am sending you to the church. So God, you go, go put everything in order. Go and put them in order and command them that everything should be done how? Decently and in order order even if there are prophecies let there be order because even the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet if you have a message ngoja huyo mwingine amalize usimdharau ujumbe wake ngoja amalize so that you also begin and then give us time to test your spirit give us time if you bring me a vision and a dream give me time to find out whether it is god you don't want me to start to change the direction of the church just because you had a dream at 2 30 in the morning no 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 there's got to be order <laughs> hallelujah if somebody comes and tells you a prophecy Mwambia, let me pray let me talk to god he will confirm whether this is in order with his will and his purpose so he was told go and reign and that is what we've been told the bible says those who have received the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness how many of you have righteousness how many of you have grace the bible says if you have received grace and righteousness then you reign in life you have dominion in life through the one jesus christ the dominion is not in yourself the dominion is in you in christ god is not gonna lose it again men are not gonna lose it again because the custodian of that dominion is not man the custodian of that dominion and the custodian of inheritance is christ so you only have dominion in christ you have the inheritance in christ you have the riches of his grace in christ because there are no longer remains a sacrifice for sin if we lose it if we were given the dominion and we lose it how would we get it and god only had one begotten son so he said i'm giving you dominion but in me are you getting in me somebody said dominion my god i have to finish this praise the name of jesus hallelujah the second and the is not the last i'll pick it up maybe the next service or next sunday control he says control i'm giving you control i'm giving you somebody say control are you enjoying this service i'm, I'm just i'm just excited by myself you know sometimes you get excited as a preacher you feel like you can hug yourself my god you can give yourself a high five my god i'm so excited somebody say control he said peter i will give to you the keys of the kingdom matthew 18 18 in the amplifier he said, I am not going to leave you in a place where you have no control. I will give you the power to make decisions and to determine what to allow and to determine what to forbid. Somebody say control. You know it's frustrating for you to be made in charge of something where you have no control. Do you understand it? You are told, when your boss 
but you have no control. It's frustrating. Do you understand that? So God said to Peter, I'm not going to leave you with authority without control. He says, truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on the earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. He says it is permitted in heaven, it is forbidden in heaven, it is unlawful in heaven, but I am giving you the power to regulate what happens here. If unlawful things happen, it's because you have allowed it. Yeah? If lawful things happen, it's because you have opened the door for them. You have the key to lock and to open. You determine what happens. Are you hearing me? You determine what happens. Somebody say, I am in control. That is why somebody said that nobody can make you feel bad about yourself without your consent. You have control over what you feel. You have control over your desires. You have control over your proclivity. You have control. Somebody shout and say, I have control. That is what Jesus shows us. He had control over his appetites. When he was hungry, the devil, Satan came to tempt him, but he refused. He was in control. You don't become the kind of people who say, I don't know what happened. No, you are in Somebody shout and say, I'm in control. He who rules his spirit is mightier than the one that taketh a city. The biggest rulership is for you to rule your spirit. You don't go off on people. All right? You don't, you don't, you don't say, ah, I love when I say, what happened? Pastor, I don't know. No. No. You mothers, when you are cooking, you remember when you were fasting? Una katakata hiyo nyama imeiva. Una ikatakata, una wapakulia, but you are under control. Hata uonji. You don't taste it. Amen. Because you are under. You walk into the streets of Nairobi. You see the dressing is getting crazier and crazier. But you are not walking like this. Looking around, una zindikisha, una vukisha uyo barabara, una teremisha uyo stairs, una peleka uyo ju. No. You control your eyes. I made a covenant with my eyes. Nimefanya agano, agano na macho yangu. Sita mtazama, mingine ila yesu. Hiyo ndiyo Methusela alikuwa naimba. Nimefanya gano gano na macho yangu sitamtazama mwingine ila Yesu. Go out there in the city even if they go naked you say my eyes are for one. This is where the sister say amen. Kama msemie amen na waitisha offering. Lady say amen. Hata wakiwa namna gani? Kwa sababu Biblia inauliza is asking. Eh? If in the plains you cannot run. I mean if you get lost in the plains, how shall you fare in the jungle of the Jordan? And if you cannot run with men on foot, how can you race with horses? Hapa kanisani unasumbuka na wamevaa vitenge. Ah. Wanakusumbua hapa. Na ukienda kwa beach. He. Ukienda kwa beach. Hmm? Tutasikia ulibadilisha citizens. Hmm? Hapa kanisa na wameonkoka wanaongea na ndimi wana kuchanganya hmm? if here you are not able to run with men how shall you race with horses 
is here. This is a plane. We all have God. Here, in this plane, plateau, you're getting lost. What if you get into the jungle of the Jordan? Hmm. Where they economize on material. I think that's where the economies are doing better than ours. Because our to me material mingi. Ukifika uko uingie New York. Nasikia kuna watu wanaingia New York wanapiga nduru. Wazabu zile vitu wanaona wajai yona. Utarudi Kenya. We. Control. Ambia jirani yako control. See how you get one girl in ushering, another girl in worship team. Akijam geni to kiambia wageni wasimame. Wau natazam. Wageni. Wageni wakienda kukunyu wache. Unasema leo ni mina serve keki. See how sabu unapenda savi ni sabu uko. Au na control. Tiwende unapokea wageni kanisani. Na unachagua aina ya wageni wakupokea. No, 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 no. Si kupenda service. Iyo ni control. Mbia jirani control. Na iyo control inakuja hata kwa pesa. Control your money. Niseme mina lipo milioni pasta after me zimbili sijui meenda wapi. Aujui na mnagani. Na wendi uko na ATM. Hmm? Control. Buy what you want to buy. You don't have to impress us. Why do I need to say that? Usikope nguwa ati ukuja na yo sande to go to impress. By the way, wengine ya waonangi. You know ladies will go, you know ule lady ya lukwa mebangu wea red. Si hatu ukuona, si tunonanga Holy Ghost. Okay, brothers. How many of you brothers remember the color of the lady seated next to you when you go home? Si unaona wakumbuki? Sasa wewe una una deni ya nguo tatu. Ati ndio ukuje ati leo hii watakumbuka. Hii lazima wakumbuke. Hawakumbukangi. Wanakumbukanga ule wanajua. Kama mimi siwezi sawa amevaa gani. Hao wengine ni details. Hao wengine ni zile zinaitwa fine print. Details. Lakini moja Nikikutuma umbia Pastor Pauline Bumu ite amevaa hivi na hivi na hivi. Lakini ya wengine sijuu amevaa aje. By the way, we don't remember. Do you remember? Sasa wewe unajipressurize na madeni, 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 madeni. Na hawa kumbuki. The brothers remember the lady they are interested in. Brothers, hapa munapiga makofi. Wale my brothers wako na control hawakujagi charge kuangalia kila mtu. Eh? After his service wanajua wanazindikisha nani. Ukimwona pale kwa ghetto sikiri ni mbao ametupa anajua ni nani anangoja. Usimlazimishe. Wacha aamue ni wewe. Eh, usimuonyeshe attitude ati unamtoa kwa kwa WhatsApp group ati sasa sijui nani unashindwa kwa nini nimetolewa na mimi bado niko kwa department hadi kwa sababu ulipita hapo huku msalimia no 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 don't force it don't force it eh squeeze mini mzuri na malizanga na housekeeping <laughs> Aleluya. Mana asifiwe. Yeah. Na sisters, usiasiume amekukatia. Kama atakukatia utajua na kukatia. Yeah. Yeah. Na nyinyi mandugu mkuwe kama Biblia hii. Unajua hii Bible yetu ya New Testament kuna words in red. Hizo ndio words za Yesu. The words in red. Si ndio? Na well, jamaa, sasa ile unakatiana, let your words be in red. Usichanganye maneno, sijui namuuliza weekend ilikuwaaje? Wacha hii maneno yati ya weekend ilikuwaaje. Yeah, sema vile unataka, 
tufanye harusi mara moja hmm? ati ulienda ushako unajua watu wengine ukatiana kuanzia roi anaanza roi anakuja hivyo mweki anakuja kamaki anakuja roiro anaenda tatu city anaenda kirigiti kabla ujue ni nini anasema jamaa amezunguka kuwa kama Yesu Yesu anasema nga verily verily i say unto you Sindio sisters sisters begin my coffee I'm going to call my wife to come and help me from here somebody shout and say dominion shout it out and say control control means you accept things and you reject others Sindio you don't accept everything the devil doesn't have the authority to dump anything at your doorstep and you do not have Yeah, the whatever to pick up everything no zingine unakata he is giving you a decision because dominion comes with decision making one as if you were put your hands together for pastor for me hallelujah let's appreciate pastor hey bana siwe sana Leo kumewaka moto. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. Verily, verily I say unto you. This is Jubilee Christian Church Thika Road. of me being crucified with Christ was to eradicate that old person that was incompatible with God that man was killed on the cross the reality of the fact in christianity is we are born of the spirit but we are discipled by the word welcome to jubilee christian church thika road understand that there is a capacity that is called the nature of god that is in you We preach cry